Hey, what's up guys? It's Flex and welcome back. Today, I'm back in my Audi A4 because it's time to step up the performance. If you guys have been watching my videos, you already know that I've done an IE stage one tune, an IE intake, a turbo muffler delete, and a blow off valve. And the car has been amazing. It drives really well, especially compared to stock. And if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. I'll link them in the description below. However, I want more power. So that means I'm trying to get to stage two. So in order to do a stage two tune, I'm gonna have to upgrade the intercooler, the downpipe, and then of course do the stage two tune. So for today's video, I'm only gonna be upgrading the intercooler, and in future videos, I'm gonna do the downpipe and the stage two tune. And I wanna thank IE for sponsoring this video and providing you with the intercooler. And if you're interested in performance parts for your Audi or VW, definitely go check out IE. Before we get to the install, why did I choose an IE intercooler? Well, the stock intercooler for most cars, they're designed to work for the OEM tune. So when the turbo compresses the air and it goes into the stock intercooler, that intercooler does enough just to cool down the air to meet the specifications of the OEM performance tune. However, once you start making more power, you need more cooling. And IE just doesn't offer an aftermarket intercooler. They offer something that's really unique, which is called FDS. So number one, their intercooler is way larger Number two, it's a lot more durable. And number three, the FDS system's really cool. So what it does is it actually channels the air into different compartments of the intercooler so it's evenly cooled down before it goes into the engine to burn up and create a lot of power, which is pretty unique compared to all the other aftermarket intercoolers out there. So yeah, I'm super excited to install this intercooler on the car and I think it's definitely gonna change the way it looks as well. So now, let's get to the install. So the first step is to remove the front bumper. I'm not going to walk you through all the details. There are some good tutorials on YouTube I'll link below. But I just need to remove this black cover up here and then a few screws up top. Next I'm going to get under the car and remove a few more screws. And there's also a few more screws in the wheel well area. Once that's done, I'm just going to pull it off and disconnect the fog lights. And then the bumper should be free. So here is the bumper removed and down here is the inner cooler. So if I follow this charge pipe, I'm going to have to disconnect it right here. And then on the other side, if I follow the charge pipe, I need to disconnect it right here from the turbo muffler delete. And right here, I'm just using a flathead screwdriver to remove the clamps, and then I can pull the hose right off. So I have both sides disconnected. The next thing is to unmount the intercooler, taking off the screw right here. And then this clip, I'm just gonna push down and pull out. And then that should release the intercooler. So the trick was to lift it up and then out on both sides and that's what released the intercooler. But you can see those are the charge pipes. So now let's take a look at the new one. So you can see there's the new intercooler. Look how large that is. The quality is really nice. So the stock one, it only measures about six inches. And the new one, check this out. It measures about 16 inches. That's almost two and a half times more. So this one has plastic on the side, but the new one, it's all aluminum construction and it's really nice. And my kit also came with some mounting brackets, hose clamps, and screws and bolts. Now let me show you the turbocharge pipes. 
So here are the rubber OEM pipes. They're not that good. They'll tear eventually, but check out the brand new one from IE. These are silicone and they're so much stronger and they're definitely going to hold up a lot longer and better with the new intercooler. I forgot to mention that it also has a port right here if you want to do some methanol injections, which is pretty cool if I want to do it down the line. So now I can grab the new intercooler and the accessories and begin the install. So this is actually supposed to slide up. I couldn't get it up because this mount is in the way on both sides. So what I need to do is actually loosen up this crash bar. And it's actually pretty easy to do. There's just two bolts up here and then two bolts on the other side. And on both sides, I need to remove the horn off from its bracket. And then this should come right off. So right here, I'm just breaking the nut loose on the horn mount and then taking off the two bolts holding the crash bar in place. So I'm just going to pry up on it and this will allow it to release a little bit because it's on really tight. So I was able to loosen it up probably about an inch. I didn't really need to take it off. And then I was able to sneak the intercooler right up and bypass these mounts. So now I can reinstall the crash bar and just make sure everything's nice and tight and I can reinstall the horns on the side as well. So on the lower right, there's this mounting hole. I'm gonna put this spacer behind it and then screw on this included screw. And then on the passenger side, it's a little different. I'm going to put the spacer inside. And then I'm going to screw down this screw. Next are the L brackets with an included screw. I'm just going to slide the bracket underneath the crash bar, line up the top hole with the intercooler and tighten down the screw and I'm going to do that for both sides. Down here, it has these little screws that I'm going to screw into place. And this is just going to tighten the bracket against the crash bar. And they should tighten down pretty well, but I'm going to leave a little left because what I need to do is install these nuts on the end of them. And I'll repeat this for the other side as well. Next are the charge pipes. I'm just going to slide it through and then make sure I tighten it down with the included clamps. Okay, now everything is installed. It's nice and clean. But before I put the bumper back onto the car, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint this crash bar black. And the reason why is I'm gonna install a brand new grill and that's this RS grill right here. Here it is, all nice and blacked out. Next, I need to remove the grill. First, I need to remove the foam piece, which pops right off and then take all these screws out along the perimeter of the grill and then unclip the grill from the bumper.
Now I'm just gonna slide on the brand new grill, make sure it clips into place, and then it's just a matter of replugging the fog lights and reinstalling the front bumper. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, I did remove my blow off valve. I decided to change it out and just go with a standard DV plus. Um, I think this just works better in circulating the air, especially if I'm going into a stage two tune. Well, here it is guys, check that out. So let me remind you what it looked like before and just look at it now. It's so aggressive. I mean, that RS grill looks so nice. You can see right through. I put the Quattro on the bottom. I think that looks really good. I'm so glad I painted that crash bar black because that was an eyesore. But look at the intercooler. Fills up the whole bottom behind the crash bar and above behind the emblem. I mean, if you're looking at this car for the first time, you're like, whoa, something is special underneath. Unfortunately, the only thing is I need to put a front plate on this because I do live in Massachusetts. I'm not gonna put it on the grill blocking this. I'm gonna put it off on the tow hitch. But I wanna go ahead and give this thing a test drive. Oh, car sounds good. So I've been driving for a while now and it's hard to tell the difference of the car with the new intercooler because it's so cold outside right now. The air is already cold going to the engine and I'm not gonna drive around for two hours just to warm up the car um, to see if there's a major difference. I mean, my goal at the end of the day is a stage two tune and this is just part of getting to that stage two tune. The good thing is there's no check engine lights or anything. I don't hear anything crazy. Everything is working perfectly fine. So there you have it guys, what do you think? I think it looks awesome. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna feel the true performance effects of it yet. I mean, right now it's pretty cold outside so the air is already cold. But I promise you, if it's a hot day or the car is running really hot, that large intercooler is definitely gonna cool down the air. And I'm gonna feel horsepower and responsiveness out of this car even in high temperatures. But with me, I'm super anxious to get the downpipe installed and the stage two tune done, even though it's still winter time. So I'm gonna wait until those are fully done and then we'll test the performance of this car. Again, if you're interested in Audi or VW performance modifications for your car, definitely go check out IE Integrated Engineering. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, hit like below. As always, make sure you subscribe and I will see you next time.